Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys as this week I reprise my role in the new member orientation Q&A that I record every week. It, it starts at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and goes till about close. Uh, in this week's Q&A, I talk MIC strategies, I talk charting, I bring up charts, I show some really cool stuff, and this is episode six. And while today is just a preview of the full-length video, if you want to watch the full-length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. All right, we are recording now. This is week six of the Q&A. Um, any questions that you guys have, shoot me a line right now. What do you want to talk about? We got a, we got a lot of things we can talk about, whether it's hard stops, whether it's lines, like whatever you guys um, think, like what'd you trade today? Do you guys have any questions to start or I can just start talking about a bunch of cool stuff? Um, yeah. What'd you guys trade today, man? I'm curious. You trade EVH? Who in here? I know somebody got some questions. Mm. Joseph, what's up, buddy? What you got? Trade Teva. Teva, I didn't even see that up. I was more focused on uh on other things. Oh, okay. Okay, this grinding back from wow, taking a massive DeFi. Okay, and free. Yeah, you know, the thing about this is like here's what I long buys. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you definitely got the pattern if you're playing an intraday pattern. You know, you got free claim over VWAP, higher lows, higher lows. Um, sure, let's see what the volume was today. Uh Wow, 46 million, yeah, definitely in play, man. There's probably some news to this, huh? I got low. God, it hit 52 week lows recently. That's freaking crazy. But uh, yeah, I used to play this all the time. See, the thing about this, guys, is I don't play setups like this, and I'll show you why. Um, this is, look at this. This is on, you know, this is just not a day one. What I like to do is for stocks like this, so like check this out. Let's GM, GM that. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah. I don't play sub ones either, but nice. Yeah, there's definitely patterns in these, so check this out. So EDH is a perfect example, right? Because this is what I like to call a, of a day one of a new catalyst. You know, you can read the news, whatever it is, fluff, maybe not. Anything that's kind of just basing for a while, and now it's up. You know, usually they're up pre-market, but this was an intraday runner technically this is pre-market shaded area and then this is a play and then you wait for your confirmations within day one so what i like to do and a good structure for mic and i'll just write this out um let's write this out one is you want the first bounce day one you want the death line day one or i'm sorry day one you want the first red day any day of major run-up, and then you want low hangers. Day two. I like day two on low hangers because day two is where all the selling pressure kind of gets filtered out. So when the stock is on like day three, I'm not a big fan of that because like if all the selling pressure and all the selling got, you know, dumped on day two, then anything can happen and it can grind back like Teva on day three. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a stock where it's just dead in the water and then this is like the day three action, you know what I mean? It's like buyers just come back in, maybe funds get in and just a ton of stuff that I'm not in the mood to hit. So TTOO today, again, this is a day two move. This was where um, Alex and I were looking to scale. I probably would have hit a little lower than Alex. I was actually waiting for it to get to about right here at the 86. Um, 
and I probably would have given it not maybe that much room, but this is the point, guys. So, like, you want to wait for your ideal opportunities. And here's what we talk about. Yeah, seriously, man. That's why I don't play stuff like that. Huge market cap, um, the huge float. Uh, Tether used to be a little bit different, if I remember correctly, like three years ago. But I'm going to tell you right now, guys, stick with, this, stick with the stocks under $5. They're more predictable. Stick with the, uh, the day ones, day twos where the patterns are very identifiable. You know, you have your confirmations. Like I remember yesterday, my biggest, this is one of my biggest confirmations, right? So if you're waiting for like a death line, check this out. One of my favorite confirmations is this, a slam candle. Let's open it. Actually, let me, let me maximize this a little bit more. Oop, one sec. Yeah, see, this is fun. Now I can do charting. Uh, this is one of my favorite setups in the freaking world, man. When a stock does this, that's the bail. That is the minute where longs are destroyed, getting wrecked, and the bigger the candle, the more I'm sizing into and chasing lows. This is where longs start to panic. A slam candle down BWAP. I don't want to trickle down, and I don't want it to wick down and then go back up. I don't want it to be anywhere near BWAP. I want this to absolutely put a sword through BWAP's heart, and then I'm starting to hit pops under. But if you want to be the ultimate version of safe, you wait right here on the death line. You know, you want to wait for this thing to really, and the death line, guys, is a part of the chart that syncs up with the last support, right? Like, arguably, like, you can look at wicks too, but here's the thing. I want where all most of the volume is, and it looks like it's right about right here, and I like the bases. So everybody has a little bit different of a death line. Sometimes they're the same. Sometimes they're a little bit different, a couple cents, whatever it is. But um, I like to go where, basically, simply put, where when no matter who you are, you're looking at the chart, your eyes just gravitate towards that's the support. You know what I mean? I don't want the lines where you're like guessing and like maybe it's here. Everybody's looking at that. You know what I mean? Like everybody's looking at right here. And then when this breaks convincingly, man, I like to pop back up to the death line and then I'm going in. I would have hit right here. I This is my strategy, but that's a little bit of anticipation. It is a intraday confirmation, but it's not it's not as safe as a death line confirmation. So I want to make that clear. Just to show you guys a little bit of like what I look for. So, you know, EVH today, this is also what I look for. I'm looking for huge, huge wicks like this. This was a farmer pump. This was a chat pump. It doesn't even matter who it was. This was pumped up. And the whole point is, is this wick is indicative of a major reversal and it, and it can happen. This is what wicks are. Wicks are nothing but panic. So when you get these kind of wicks, man, especially at whole dollar fails, like eight right there, this just bags so many, so many longs that were chasing their balls off. And then once they get under VWAP, they can start to unwind a little bit. And here's the thing. This is a neckline. So I wanted this thing under here. And I think I said it in chat. I said the safest play is under 650. But uh, this, is, this is technically the death line right here. And here's the thing, guys. Look at it. Look at it. Take this away. Because that's too conservative. Look at this. It breaks this level, and, and you just have so much downside, man. Like, you can really get a nice short out of this. And here's the thing. You know, the volume drops off. Where's the demand? And you can start hitting all the pops. So this is what we talk about, like, writing a core, right? You can short right here at the death line break cover a little bit on washes, add back your position on a core, cover, cover, cover on washes, and add every single pop. And I like to hit them where these, where these little bursts happen. See these? I like to hit them where these, these, like, these little like volume pockets come in, you know? So you can kind of gauge these a little bit. And you know, they kind of link up. So, you know, obviously this is grinding back. You can take note of that. This was the red flag there. Um, I like to say that this, this is one of my tricks. When you see, so all volume action, um, you know, all, all, all morning uh, volume is the biggest, usually in the mornings, right? So here's what I do every day, and this is a really good trick for you guys. Uh, check this out. I like to put a line in about the 40% to 50% area of a stocks chart every single day on the volume specifically. Look closely. 
I like to do about 40%. That's about, yeah, that's about right. Uh, maybe about right there. About right there. And usually the biggest candle is right here. Here's what I do. Anytime that I see, and I've back tested this for years, anytime I see a stock reaching the 40% level or breaking it, I know there's a chance of a reversal. That is volume and demand coming in that is quote unquote comparable to the morning action that I'm very much taking note of. If it's under there and then slamming back down and just fading off, then obviously I'm gonna probably be hitting pops until it doesn't work. But as you guys can see, I mean, it starts testing these levels. Look, it just tested that level. Bam, fuck you candle right through VWAP and shorts are smoked. Who chased here, here, and here, and here. Um, higher lows, higher lows, this thing is totally reclaiming. Will it dive back down? or go back up, I mean, time will tell. You know, I'm not opening any positions at this time. I trade the morning. But the whole point is, is this is a great guide for me to judge whether I'm gonna add, reduce, bail, or just cover completely, or even swing. If these volume bars stayed this low right here the rest of the day, and didn't have these big ones, or didn't have higher low action, and I have a good short right here, I may swing this thing, you know? That's how I play stocks. So I'll set my stops, and I'll walk away and I'll let my stops do the talking for me, trailing stop, whatever it is. Um, I just wanna make sure I heard you right. To find a tab, I should just reach out to the tab. Oh yes, so Ryan, sorry, I, I may have glossed over that really quickly. Um, if you're looking for a tab, guys, right here, you go to the tab channel and say, I am looking for X, Y, Z, right? Like whatever it is, um, write what you're looking for and then reach out to, you can send them DMs or you can tag them, reach out to Woody and reach out to Dave Vaughn, who's Dr. Blunt, um, reach out to these guys for help. Well, that's how you find a tap partner, buddy. Uh, let's go back. Oleg, Tosh, on OTOO, what was the probability it would bounce off resistance? Uh, what made you so confident it would fail? So. Hold on one sec, let me go back, T-T-O-O. -O. Here's the thing, man. This thing, this is, okay, let me, in, let me speak more generally rather than even specific because this is a very general, great example of what a low hanger is for a stock and what we talked about, low hanging fruit. Uh, yeah, yeah, hold on, buddy. Um, so check this, so check this. Stocks that get wrecked on day one, you know, wrecked meaning, you know, the longs just kind of bailed, shorts were in control, you know, it was dying pre-market, man. When you have a stock with this much overhead pre-market and breaking down half of its frick, I mean, look at this. You draw a line, and this is half, it's opening half of what it's up. This is down, there's bag holders, man, there's bag holders right here. I know that I'm gonna be shorting back when it reaches what? Resistance level, so I wanna scale, this is where I wanna scale in the opening push. You know, this is what Alex did yesterday. This is where the resistance is. This is where the bag holders are. You know, the longer the journey, the longer into resistance, the bigger the come down. So because this is half, it's already opening half the range, it's telling me that people are in trouble. You know, it's opening literally half the range. Now, I'm either shorting here or I'm hitting death line, right? Like when it breaks down here. So that's the key there. Now, when it comes to a low hanger, Sorry if I'm going quick, guys. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to give you guys examples, but I'm also trying to like answer questions at the same time. So when a stock gets wrecked and the longs get destroyed and this is a good short setup throughout the day and it closes very low from its highs, this is now a low hanger. Now, you can hit a great, a great um, strategy is to hit like, what's the, I'll just give a very quick, I'll eyeball this, but like, this is basically your um, red to green line, right? Like, like, like somewhere around here. This is like your red to green line. Here's what I like to do, and here's a good guide. Um, if a stock gaps down the next day and does a thorough gap down, I like to hit at the red to green line. And you know, the red to green line on DOS looks like this. Uh, what is it? Look? White. I'll just make it. I'll make it look like a red to green line, right? That's a red to green line on DOS, right? And uh, I'm, I'm in the middle here, so it didn't hit exactly. It, probably, it might have been right here, uh, something like that. We'll say like right there. So I, if it gaps down on day two, because this is a low hanger and I know longs are in trouble, I like to scale 
the red to green line it, just before it, on it, and just over it. Now, if this gapped up, so if this gapped up here and it's opening at this, say, say it's opening at this level, right? Like say this is just normal line, say this is the open price. And it's opening right here. Now I'm looking for much outer lines and I want to scale into about this range. I want to scale into previous high of day because on a gap of signal strength the next day, and I know not as many people are maybe stuck or whatever it is, but if it gaps down, I'm hitting the red to green line and just over with a tight stop, put your stops in place everywhere, a hard stop, no matter what, no matter the trade, if it gaps up and stuff, I am looking for two things. I'm either looking if it's close to pre-market IAV, because sometimes, you know, these are really gap up, and it might gap up here, and then you're using this, but this is a fantastic guide. And this is why Alex was talking about the 90. <laughs> I got lines everywhere. Just giving you guys a ton of examples. This is why Alex wanted to scale this level. Take a look at this. This, see this level right here for scale? This is where the majority of the volume is. This is a huge resistance level coming back up. And this is a ton of volume that may air out if it gets back up here. Because here's what you got to understand. When people are underwater, uh, longs from yesterday, they want out. They want to break even at very best. So this creates an example of them breaking even and getting out. This is a great place to scale into. Whether it gaps down or gaps up or even just bases, this is still where a majority of the volume was yesterday and where it started to fail. I mean, look, here, let me remove this. Let me create smaller ones. Hold on. See the topping action? A topping action. That's, huge. That's a huge fail right there. See that? Here's another one. That's topping action. That's topping action. You want to scale into these levels of fail, these resistance levels. These are resistance levels. So you want to take note and what seems like the, the possible choice that day or where it opens and where it gaps and you want to pay attention. But this is a perfect low hanger, man. Stock that gets wrecked day one, pops a little bit and sells off. It's called a continuation play because it's the continuation of trend. So let me, let me draw something. Draw a trend line. This is why it's called a continuation play, specifically because of this. It's continuing the trend downward on the next day. See that? See that? Now, like I said earlier, the reason why I think new traders should only stick to day one and day twos is because I, nobody does, not only, you guys got to pay attention to this, anything that you short, you need to have meat on the bone. Here's another reason why Alex wanted to wait for the 90 and the one. Look at this. The move originated here. The move originated here. You short right here, you don't have much meat at all if it does break down. Now it did, it did. So, you know, not, this is not an exact science. But again, guys, go with the stocks with meat on the bone. If this had a dollar come down, then yeah, you could probably hit lower. But here's the point. You want to wait for that blackjack hand. You want to wait for the 20, the two tens. You want to wait for the 21 and when the dealer busts. So, you know, I mean, you know, we use this example a lot is imagine you can see your hand in blackjack in a casino and then place your bets versus placing it beforehand. Brother, if you get a blackjack, you're going to go all in. If you, that, that's an A plus setup. If you get a, if you get a, if you get a king, king, you're going to split those kings and bet heavy, right? So that's the whole point, you know? It's just put the put the odds in your favor, bro. So so for a day two, you know, I'm not looking to hit this down here. It's got no meat. It's got even if you do nail a move, it's a little bit risky. This thing can squeeze back. And here's the thing: the meat is gone now. Look where it is. So if you try to scale this tomorrow down here, this could fucking go back. Day three, man, all the selling pressure might have might have came out of the balloon. So you need to be careful. You definitely need to be. You want to short stocks that are overextended, that are not up for a good reason that have room to come down and are bloated, right? Stocks 100%, 200%, 300% with still a ton of room to come down. This has no room to come down for tomorrow. You know, anything sure can do offerings, blah, 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 and then it goes to 40 cents, who knows? Um, I'm not trying to predict that shit. That's crazy. That's crazy, dude. Then you're a gambler. You know, don't, don't do that stuff. Uh, give yourself the best, uh, best odds for, for success. Um, 
so hopefully all this all this charting is helping you guys. I mean, this is just stuff that I look for daily, man. Oh, let me show you guys what I really, you wanna see my A plus? I'll show you what I really, really look for daily. <coughs> no better example. This is the fucking A pluses, A plus for me. Uh, doo -doo -doo. The MPI, baby. This is, oh man, I love these stocks that are up for no reason, man. They, they top, they do topping action, and then boom, they slam under BWAP. They do waterfall cannon. They're just dead in the water, man. But so here's an even better example. Remember what I said. I like slams through BWAP. You see this? I'm just going to tell you how I trade. I'm not telling you how to trade this. This is how I trade. I see this. I'm chasing hard here, and I will scale all the way up to this death candle. This, I'm hitting hard. The bigger the death slam through VWAP, the, likely, the less likely chance it has to grind back and come back and reach new highs. In my opinion, from what I've back tested, again, this is more just my opinion, but I see this shit, I'm, this is my, I'm going in balls deep. And here's the thing, look at this. Look at the correlation between VWAP, like I said. Draw your line, 40%. Where's the demand? Where's the demand? Stays under all day, doesn't even come close. Look at this. Where's the demand? Fades off all fucking day. See that? Falls deep, baby. Here. Wait. Right. <laughs> Screenshot this. <laughs> there you go. You degenerates out there. This this is my balls deep setup. <laughs> Oh God, we're such degenerates. I'm sorry if there's any women in here. Um, but so this is what I like, guys. This is what I look for every single day. Why, 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 why short any of this? This front side. Wait for your confirmation. This is specifically mine. There's a waterfall candle slam through VWAP. I know all these longs who chased are smoked. Under VWAP is where I short, boom, pop, 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 fade volume, fade volume, fade volume. If I have an average right here and it does this and closes right here, I'm swinging this bitch. I will swing this. Not my full position, but I will stay safe. And hopefully, hopefully though, I'm speaking generally, it's got to be a stock with at least a five or more million float, if not like 10. I'm not swinging two, three million floats, man. You got to be safe. Um, can you go over how you establish the 40% of volume level, 40% of which part? Yep, I, I just did that right here, buddy. So I think you, I think you got that. Uh, Ratio between growth and sell-off. Yep, very useful. Uh, ballsy, blah, 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 ballsy. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm making you guys laugh. Uh, so when you say pop, pop, shorting the pops, you're adding on the pops. So here's what I do. <clears throat> here's what I do, partner. Here, I'll just draw it out. I, I think I can draw this out. I'll try. Uh, it, this is what I'm waiting for all day, right? This is what I'm waiting for. I am hitting this, and I'll scale. I'll have open orders, open order. You know, these are open limits. They haven't filled, right? Like maybe this one's filled. I will scale all the way up and this is my ultimate risk. Ultimate risk, because the chances of it breaking this, this death line, the top of the death line, or the death candle is pretty hard. If it can, you should not be in this stock. If this can make it back over this waterfall, you do not be short. I'm telling you, that is immediate bailout entirely. So here's what happens. My stop is right there. So I set little pre-limits, you know, and, uh, and my stop is there. And then I will walk away. So I'm in, I'm in, you know, if it fills, it fills great. I'm predicting that this stop is an accumulation of if all of these fill, and then I am literally walking away. And here's what I do. I simultaneously set fantasy covers at supports. This is a support zone. See this? Under. This is about a support zone, so I'm covering somewhere in here. You know, I'm just spitballing this right now, but somewhere, you know, even right here. Look at these support zones. And then, and then I'll even hold for like a red move. So I'll have fantasy covers down here. So I walk away. So this is my initial position. Say this is the only thing I get. Then, uh, then here's what's going to happen. You know, it's just going to fill me a little bit here, a little bit here, maybe a little bit here. Maybe I get all this. I don't know. I have to piece that out. It depends on the trade. But let me uh, – let me do another example. What I think new traders should focus on that are watching screens all day. If you do get in somewhere like right here, the best you can do is cover a little bit right here, maybe half, add back a quarter. Cover, add back a little bit. But 
the, like add back every pot, you know, cover every major wash. Here's the thing. You should always have a little bit of an original core position. So each time you add and cut and each time you add again, your average should do this. If this is your average, it should come down a little bit as you go. It should come down a little bit and you should set hard stops above or for break even. It should just keep coming down a little bit. You don't want your average to go from this line to this line. You don't want that. That's bad. Then you're then in a little pop, you're gonna get scared and you're gonna stop out. You need to play a core position correctly and you need to add on pops. And don't add too much, don't double down. You know, maybe you have, I'll just say for new traders that use like maybe 500 shares right here, and then you're adding a thousand right here. I mean, you can do that. I'm just trying to give you the best odds for success. Um, and I don't want you to get shaken out. Uh, man, this, uh, this setup makes me want to start shorting. <laughs> yeah, no shit, dude. This fucking, <laughs> a nutless monkey could short this setup, man. I'm telling you right now, like, uh, like in Tropic Thunder when, uh, Tom Cruise is the, is the, is the Hollywood producer or whatever. He's like, a nutless monkey could do this job. Well, I'm not saying this is easy, but I'm saying this is a very simple setup. And, uh, this is what's made me money for, for many years. Um, so that's what, and th these are rare, man. You don't usually see this beautiful of a, my God, look at that. This is, you don't see that often. But when you do, um, I'm going in and I'm going in hard. Um, but uh, what was uh, e a EBH? I never remember what that was. Um, yeah, so I mean, obviously, you know, this didn't have the death candle slam, but here's the thing. This is what I don't like to see. And this is why I called the death line earlier. So check this out, guys. This is another really good way to stay safe. Remember, you want breaks through VWAP. You don't want this trickle down shit. See how it's close to VWAP? It's hovering. Look at this. It's a clusterfuck. I don't want this. That's an anticipation short. If I got in right here, I'm anticipating. This can rip, fuck you candle to shorts, rip to new highs, and go blast off, especially if a pumper gets involved. The only way I'm hitting this is boom, on death candle breaks and pops back up to death candle. See these? That's what I'm hitting. You've got to play safe. Anticipation versus confirmation. Anticipating a breakdown is how you go broke because you win today, you win tomorrow, the next day you lose your ass. You want to have the confirmation that the, that the level you need it to break and where longs are truly underwater or shorts are truly underwater, whatever it is, long or short, you need to wait for these confirmation levels. And then, and then, I don't care who you are, I don't care how good you think you are, I don't care how much size you play, whether it's one share or one million shares, you need hard stops in your life. They're going to save you, they are going to keep you safe. Um, as a new trader, you should respect a max loss on the day, you should respect a certain dollar amount lost and then you call it quits, you should call your broker, tell them to cut you off with a certain level, and you should also use hard stops and equate whatever you're going to lose before you enter that trade. And so your hard stop is getting you out where, you're, where either your max loss is or what you're willing to risk on that specific trade. Uh, stay safe, man. Mental and capital preservation is how you trade. Like me, Alex, about, you know, six years later, 16 years later, you know, you stay safe when you're never in true, true, true danger. Um, because it's a dangerous game, man. It's a dangerous game. So you want to give yourself the best odds for longevity and the best odds for success. And the worst thing you could do, be stupid, wing it, not set a hard stop, and then guess what? You get your balls ripped off and now your confidence is gone because you were green for every day for 30 days and now that 31st day um, just just stuck a broom up your ass, man, and, and now you're done. Now you're screwed. Uh, pardon the analogy, but I, I, you know, I, yeah, that's what happens. So you gotta be safe. You gotta be safe. You gotta protect yourself. Ooh, I just winded myself. How you guys doing? <laughs> so we just went over a lot of cool tips and uh, tricks on charting that I do or whatever. Uh, and then uh, here's an example. So let me show another example, guys, of outer lines. What are outer lines? This is a very common term that we throw around a lot. Let me show you an example. So boom, you're coming along pre-market. Uh, permit, yeah, well, yeah, Oleg, thanks, man. I, I finally got charting on this computer so I can show you guys some stuff. I was just talking before. So now we're talking about uh, inner and outer lines. What's an outer line, right? I'm glad I recorded this one. You guys can watch this back if you want. Uh, here's the inner line, boom, inner line. Inner line, you know, well, not right there, hold on. This is inner lines. See these guys? 
these are, this is what you call inner lines. If you're a short seller and we talk about um, inner and outer lines, wait for the outer lines. This is an outer line. This is an outer line. Let me, let me like make these as big as I can do it. And literally change the color so you guys can see. These are outer levels. I need to make this very clear. This stock is not up that much pre-market. So yesterday you're like, wow, you know, it's up from 70 cents to $1.13. And yeah, there's overhead, which is great. But you want to wait for the outer lines. I don't want to hit right here. So there's two ways to scale. I don't want to scale in this level. I want to scale in this level because here's what happens. Again, I'll say it again, man. If you miss, you miss. Who gives a shit? There's always another play. If you get squeezed out and you take a loss and you didn't wait for the A plus, the blackjack setup, you are risking mental capital. You are risking a downturn. You are risking a reversal in your PL curve because now you're not confident. You took a loss. It's a hit to your emotions. Don't, a, a miss is not a hit to your emotions. A loss is. You lose twice, mental and real capital. So take a look. Let's go to the open, right? Boom, open. Rip through inner lines. Rip right through them. You don't want inner lines. I'd rather miss than get squeezed out because here's what happens when you hit inner lines, right? Take this away. Here's what happens when, when, when this is your average. Now, your the now amateur shorts are squeezed out where pro shorts are entering. See how we fill your exits? That's what happens. That's the difference, guys. Wait for your 2020 blackjack hand. Boom. You start. And here's the thing. It's not always going to go up to your exact perfect level. You know, this is the perfect level, right? But guess what? This is why we talk about scaling. You may just get a starter right here. But here's the beauty of stock trading and why every move has a domino effect. Let me go into this even deeper. Even if you got a starter right here. Look at this. Say you're a new trader, say you're trading smaller size, say you only got a thousand shares right here, right? So let's say you got 105. Say so you got 105. That's right, let's do a small. All right, 105 is your first order, right? You got a thousand shares. Now at fucking death candle slam, that's my confirmation. So say I only got started on, right? When I wanted 5,000 up here. Say I wanted 5,000, I got one. Now I got a death candle slam. What do you think I'm doing? I'm hitting that pop right there and I'm hitting very hard because my average is fantastic. So I may double down. Now I've got, now as a new trader, you got maybe 3,000 shares or 2,000, 3,000 shares and your average is still right here. And then look, it never even came back. Volume died off all day, boom. Did it come back? No, that's the point. Now you can hit right here, you can cover here. You can hit add throwback on here and now your average is only like right here. Bring your average down as you bring your scales down and bring your covers down. You see how this works? It's a domino effect. That one starter, because you waited right, may have saved everything and maximized everything because here's what happens. You don't get anything on and then it does slam right here. If you're a degenerate like me, you're gonna follow and chase lows, but as a new trader, you might be scared to hit weakness and you don't get anything when had you had the starter and you added right here on this pop, your average would have been brought down. See the difference? <laughs> exactly, I like, yep. Dude, every, every action has a reaction in trading. Whether you get a starter on, whether you miss a starter, whether you get the confirmation you waited for, whether you already have a great average, whether you want to swing it, every action has a reaction. And let me tell you, it's a snowball domino effect. If I get even just a starter there, I'm confident as hell to go balls deep right here and cover, now I'm cushioned with a good average and now go even balls deeper right here so then I can ride it all day and here's the best part. Say I ride it all day and I've been covering covering piecemeal, say my average is right here, now I'll swing this puppy because now it's making new lows and it close for the most part. I mean, it's not making new lows but it's within the realm of being still weak and slaughtered and I've got a fantastic average. So even if it gapped up on me the next day, I'm break even baby and I'm already cushioned from the day before. You see how level, you see how detailed this gets? Every move you make in trading sets the tone for the rest of the day, week, month, year, even the next 15 minutes. If you are rushing in, if you're chasing, if you're being a dipshit, 
you will pay the price. This is the perfect example of why discipline and patience pays in trading. And that's my rant. <laughs> Man, I'm tired. <laughs> Here's what we'll do, guys. If I show you every trick I've ever made, then we just won't have content for next week and the next week. So why don't we wrap it up here? My throat's starting to hurt, man. I've been, I've been screaming at you guys for two hours uh, or about an hour and a half. So why don't we wrap up here, and uh, next week we'll get into some more stuff. So if you guys show up next week, come with more questions. Come with specific examples. Uh, ask me what you want. But, again, just to recap, uh, just remember, um, let's see, recap. Do the 40% volume thing, watch the demand and sell off for that on whether to add, reduce, or scale, uh, or to bail completely. You want pre-market overhead, pay attention to that. We did inner and outer lines. Uh, we did death lines. We did VWAP candle slams, um, where you should enter, what confirmation anticipation was. Um, I, this is all recorded, guys, so you can watch this back if you want. Um, and uh, again, man, like, I'm going to go enjoy my birthday, but uh, yeah, I'm here for you guys, man. I'm, you know, if you do what you love, I'm, of course I'm not going to take a day off. Why would I? I love this stuff. So um, I'm here to help you guys. If you have any questions, reach out for PMs. Um, again, let me give you my email one more time. And uh, just shoot me a line, man, any, any time you guys want. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Seriously. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, guys. Um, fantastic session. Love you guys. Uh, if you want to show up next week, we'll, we'll talk about more stuff, man. Now that I got a, now that I got charting up here, we'll talk about some really cool stuff. I'll try to find some stuff moves and stuff like that and, and whatever. Uh, all right guys, catch you, uh, catch you next week. Thanks for coming. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.